Do you remember the George cartoon from 1985? And did you have any of the action figures? We're going to go over how much these cost if you were to buy them today and what you should look for when collecting these. Let's go. Kenner was facing tough times with no new Star Wars movies on the way, and their Power of the Force line losing steam. So they turned to the droids and Ewoks Saturday morning cartoons to try and save their once unstoppable toy line. The droids animated series hit TV screens on September 7, 1985, but only lasted one season, wrapping up in June of 1986, after just 13 episodes. Unfortunately, it didn't quite connect with its audience the way the Ewoks cartoon did, which actually got a second season. The droids line gave us 13 action figures, two lightsabers, and three vehicles. The vehicles were also well received, especially the A-Wing fighter, which remains in high demand among collectors today. A second wave of action figures was planned, but sadly, it never got beyond the prototype stage. The droids toys were relatively easy to find for a while, but carded figures are becoming more and more scarce these days, particularly in good condition. This scarcity is partly due to the low production numbers at the time, and even though these were all also released in Canada and Brazil, there just weren't a lot of them sold back then. I'm going to focus on the USA Kenner releases and their prices. And let's start with R2-D2, released in 1985's Series 1, on the 12 backs. And this figure got a paint and sticker upgrade from the Power of the Force, with the same pop-up lightsaber that the Power of the Force figure had. It also comes with a gold-colored collector's coin. Loose and complete, this figure in great condition is commanding staggering prices of $700, with the coin costing $80 to $100 in good shape. And mint on cards, in good shape, are running average prices of $1,200 today. The prices in this video have been researched and averaged on sites like Facebook, eBay, and on various accredited auction sites. Doing that research takes time and resources, so to support this channel, visit the links in the description of this video. Join this channel as a member or support me at patreon.com slash the Padawan Collector. Your generous support keeps this channel making content, so thank you. And now, back to the video. The A-Wing pilot was released in 1985 and is a repack of the Power of the Force figure exactly. It comes with a black Endor blaster and a gold-colored collector's coin. Loose, complete, and in great shape, this figure will cost averages of $315. With the coin not being sold by itself that often, but average prices are running $100 to $150 in great shape. And mint on card, this will cost average prices from $1,400 to $1,700 for a card in good shape today. The Boba Fett droids figure would be released in 1985 and is a repack from the 1979 figure exactly and comes with the solid black Imperial Blaster. It would have been cool to get a repaint of this figure to match the animated color scheme, but sadly we did not. Loose and complete with the black solid Imperial Blaster, it's going to cost you anywhere from $150 to $200 for figures and blasters in great shape. The coin hardly goes on sale by itself, and ungraded will cost anywhere from $600 to $900 for a coin in great shape. With great mint on card examples running anywhere from $8,000 to $11,000. These are often replicated and try to be passed off as original, so do your research on this card back before buying ungraded. Jantosh was released in 1985 and comes with the black IG-88 rifle and a gold-colored collector's coin. Jan was a hard-working miner and ended up owning R2 and C-3PO after he saw the droids being mistreated by their master and bought them on the spot. Loose and complete, this figure in excellent shape is going to cost you around $120 with its coin costing anywhere from $30 to $60 in good shape. And mint on card, prices are running about $250 to $350 for good examples. George Dusat was released in 1985 and comes with the black Zuckus Blaster and a collector's coin. George was a speed racer who came to own R2 and 3PO after they were separated from Captain Antilles. Loose and complete, this figure in excellent shape is coming in at around $110, while the coin in great shape is going to cost you $30 to $50. And mint on card examples in good shape are running about $200 today. Kia Mold was released in 1985 and comes with a gray Bespin blaster and a gold colored collector's coin. Kia was an anti-imperial fighter who ended up on an adventure with R2 and 3PO when the droid's master decided to help her. Loose and complete, this figure is going to cost you around $140 in great shape, with the coin costing $40 for an excellent example. And mint on card, these are selling for around $230 for one in good condition. 
Kez Ibon was released in 1985 and comes with a solid black Imperial Blaster and a blue shoulder pouch. Kez Ibon's name was actually Monjolpa and is helped out by 3PO, R2-D2, and their masters to restore his rightful claim to his throne. Loose, complete, and in great shape, this figure is commanding prices of $185, with the coin not coming up for sale that often and running prices of about $50 to $60. And Mindon card examples in good condition are selling for $350 today. C-3PO from the Droids cartoon series was released in 1985 and is a repaint of the 1982 Empire Strikes Back C-3PO with removable limbs. And although you can take off the arms and legs, this does not come with a black vinyl backpack like the 1982 figure did. This figure comes with a collector's coin, and early versions of this coin were packed with gold-colored versions of the Power of the Force coin, which was later updated to a newly designed coin with the droid's design scheme. Loose versions of the figure in great shape will go for high prices of around $600 today, with the coin costing about $50 for excellent versions. And mint on card examples in good shape, running prices of $1,000 to $1,400 today. Size From was released in 1985 and comes with a purple soft goods cloak and a gold colored collector's coin. Size was a kingpin in a galactic crime syndicate and once employed Boba Fett to eliminate his rivals. A loose complete version of this action figure in great shape will run about $900, while the coin will command prices of $150 to $200 in good shape and a mint on card example in good condition will cost about $1,300 to $1,500 today. Thal Jobin was released in 1985 and comes with a black Imperial Blaster and a gold-colored collector's coin. Thal, along with George Dusat, was a speeder racer and briefly owned R2 and 3PO. It's been said that Thal and Jord were the inspiration for the character designs of the biker gang that Boba Fett hires in the Book of Boba Fett. A loose complete example of Thal in great shape will cost around $150 today, and the coin will run prices of around $40, while mint on card examples in good condition are selling for prices around $325. Tig From was released in 1985 and comes with 2-1-B's medical tool and a gold-colored collector's coin. Tig is the younger son of the crime lord Size From. Tig's loose complete action figure in great shape sells for prices of about $500, and the coin is going for prices of about $100 to $150. Mint on card and in good condition, this can run about $700 today. Uncle Gundy was released in 1985 and comes with a black molded Reyes blaster and a gold colored collector's coin. His real name is Putch Gundrian, and he was also a miner with his nephew, Jantosh, who briefly owned R2 and 3PO, and Uncle Gundy would actually kick and abuse R2-D2. Gundy's loose complete action figure in great shape will cost around $200 today, with the coin coming in at prices of $100, and a mint on card example in good condition will run about $300 today. And even though I'm only mentioning the USA Kenner releases, I have to mention Vlix who is arguably one of the most rare action figures to exist. The only figure released in the Droid Series 2 wave in 1986 and only released in Brazil through the Glasslight Company, this figure comes with a black molded Imperial Hoth Blaster. But prototypes of the USA Kenner figure show that this would have been paired with the AT-AT Driver's Blaster. The Brazil figure was never released with a coin, and prices for a loose figure can go anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000. And the card back ungraded is very rare to see, with the earliest data point I have being in 2016 for a little over $16,000. An official second wave was underway for the US and Canada and planned for a 1986 release but never saw production. The second wave, had it hit shelves, would have included Admiral Screed, Gaff, General Kong, Jessica Mead, Mon Julpa, Mungo Baobab, Kleb Zelik, and a USA released Flix figure. In the next video, we're gonna go over the Ewoks action figures based on the 1985 and 1986 cartoons and what they're worth today. So to see that or other videos, click on your screen now. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time.